Intel, AMD, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. $50 billion invested in Malaysia in 24 months. The U.S. barely noticed. While America was distracted by TikTok bans and AI hype, Malaysia captured the infrastructure that powers the entire Asian digital economy. Game over. They won, and nobody saw it coming. Ten moves. For decades. One country that outplayed the entire Western world. Number one will blow your mind. It's already too late to stop them. Subscribe now. This is the power shift nobody's talking about. Let's go. 10. 1972. Intel's Penang Gamble. While America was perfecting semiconductors, Intel made a decision that would reshape global tech for 50 years. 1972. Intel opens its first overseas assembly plant in Penang, Malaysia. The U.S. barely noticed chip assembly was considered low-tech labor. Wrong. Malaysia spent five decades building semiconductor expertise, supply chains, and infrastructure. Now, 13% of global semiconductor trade flows through Malaysia, seventh largest semiconductor exporter on Earth, ahead of Germany, ahead of France, over 50 semiconductor companies in Penang alone. When Malaysian facilities were locked down in 2021, global chip shortages cascaded worldwide. Automotive production stopped. Electronics delayed. Malaysia proved they're not a participant. Their choke point. America thought semiconductor design was power. Malaysia proved back-end processing is controlled. You can design all the chips you want without Malaysian packaging and testing. They're useless silicon. Checkmate. Semiconductors were phase one. Phase two was even more audacious. Nine, the multimedia super corridor, 1996. 1996, Malaysia announces the Multimedia Super Corridor. Western tech press laughed. Build it and they'll come? Good luck. Malaysia built Cyber Jaya, a dedicated tech city with fiber infrastructure, tax incentives, streamlined regulations, and government support. Western observers mocked it as wishful thinking. 30 years later, Microsoft's $2.2 billion data center investment. Google's $2 billion. Amazon's $6.2 billion. ByteDance, Oracle, NVIDIA, all flooding in. 30 plus billion dollars in tech investments announced in 18 months. That's more than most European countries attract in a decade. The build it and hope strategy wasn't hope. It was a 30 year plan the US didn't have the patience to execute. America thinks in election cycles. Malaysia thinks in generations. Consistency compounds. While U.S. tech policy whiplashed every four years, Malaysia executed the same strategy for three decades. Now they're reaping the harvest. Infrastructure attracted attention. The talent pipeline sealed the deal. 8. The talent arbitrage. American tech graduate, $100,000 in debt, demands $150,000 salary. Malaysian tech graduate, zero debt, accepts $40,000 salary, same skills. Malaysia invested heavily in subsidized STEM education. Engineering, computer science, data analytics, all taught in English. Graduates emerge debt-free, hungry, and competent. American companies get skilled talent at 40 to 60% cost savings with zero student loan baggage. 60, 000 plus STEM graduates annually. English proficiency ranks 26th globally, ahead of Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines combined. Microsoft hiring 6, 000 plus. Google is expanding massively. Amazon building regional tech teams. They're not outsourcing. They're relocating because the talent to cost ratio destroys Western alternatives. AI and cloud computing are talent intensive. Whoever controls affordable, skilled talent at scale wins. America produces expensive, debt-burdened graduates. Malaysia produces affordable, motivated engineers. Economics 101. But talent and infrastructure need one more thing. Neutrality? 7. The neutrality weapon. The US-China tech war forced everyone to choose sides. Malaysia said, No thanks, we'll work with both. Genius play. Malaysia maintains partnerships with American giants, Google, 
Microsoft, Amazon, Intel, and Chinese giants, ByteDance, Alibaba, Huawei. They're the Switzerland of tech infrastructure. American companies operate freely. Chinese companies operate freely. Nobody forces exclusionary choices. 90 plus billion dollars in combined trade with both the US and China. Huawei 5G infrastructure deployed while AWS builds data centers next door. This shouldn't work, but it does because Malaysia refuses to take sides and both sides accept it. As tech bifurcates into US and China spheres, companies need neutral ground where they can operate without geopolitical constraints. Malaysia is the only major player offering that. Rare positioning becomes valuable positioning. Neutrality open doors. Tax policy kept them open. 6. The tax warfare. Western countries call it race to the bottom. Malaysia calls it winning. 10 to 15 year tax holidays. 0 to 5% effective corporate tax rates. 100% capital expenditure deductions. Import duty exemptions. Fast track approvals. Malaysia weaponized tax incentives while Western countries lectured about fair taxation. On a $2 billion data center investment, Malaysian incentives save hundreds of millions over a decade versus US or European alternatives. That's not marginal. That's a completely different ROI calculation. Capital goes where it's treated best. Malaysia treats it best. Western countries want investment without competition. They want companies to invest out of loyalty or convenience. Malaysia understood reality. Offer the best terms, capture the capital. Moral posturing doesn't build data centers. Incentives do. Tax incentives close deals. But there's an energy angle nobody anticipated. 5. The green energy trap. AI data centers consume gigawatts of power. Malaysia bet billions on renewable energy before it became a tech requirement. 2010s, Malaysia aggressively builds solar, tropical sun year-round, hydroelectric abundant rainfall, offshore wind. They didn't just build renewable capacity, they built it specifically near tech zones and connected it to data center infrastructure. When Microsoft, Google, and Amazon committed to carbon neutral operations, Malaysia said, we already have two zero 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 plus MW of renewable energy ready. Eight, 000 plus MW renewable capacity and expanding rapidly, targeting 70% renewable by 2050. Compared to Singapore, limited by geography, Indonesia, slow deployment, Thailand, bureaucratic obstacles. Malaysia streamlined regulations allowing companies to directly contract renewables. Competitors still can't do this efficiently. The next decade of AI infrastructure is energy constrained, specifically clean energy. Countries providing renewable power at scale win AI investments. Malaysia positioned early. Western countries are still debating. Energy enables scale, but there's a regulatory masterstroke. Four, the data sovereignty solution. Asia passed data localization laws. Tech companies faced a nightmare. Build infrastructure in every country or violate regulations. Malaysia solved it. Position as the regional data hub satisfying localization requirements through geographic proximity and ASEAN integration frameworks. Close enough to serve Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam with low latency. Legal frameworks allowing cross-border data processing under regional agreements. Malaysia's data protection laws align with international standards, GDPR compatible. ASEAN frameworks recognize Malaysia as a strategic hub. Result, process data from 10 plus countries in one location instead of building 10 plus separate data centers. Regulatory arbitrage worth billions. Data sovereignty regulations fragment the internet and multiply infrastructure costs. Malaysia offers the only scalable solution in Southeast Asia. One hub serving the entire region legally. Competitors can't easily replicate because it requires infrastructure and regulatory coordination Malaysia spent years building. That regulatory edge enables something bigger. 3. The Infrastructure Obsession While America fights over AI and apps, Malaysia captures the boring infrastructure that makes everything else possible. Think in layers, top layer, 
Apps and AI. Sexy. Headlines. High risk. Bottom layer. Semiconductors. Data centers. Fiber networks. Power grids. Boring. Essential. Defensible. Western and Chinese companies fight viciously over top layers. Malaysia said, let them fight. We'll own the foundation they all depend on. 13% global semiconductor trade. $137 billion in electronics exports. 30 plus billion in data center investments. Critical fiber network connections across ASEAN. They don't own ChatGPT or TikTok. They own the infrastructure those services run on. Apps and platforms come and go. Infrastructure persists for decades and creates irreplaceable switching costs. Malaysia doesn't compete with tech companies. They enable all of them. Permanent relevance regardless of which technologies dominate. That's not market power. That's structural power. Infrastructure is durable. But the ultimate move connects everything. 2. The 40-Year ASEAN Bet 1980s. ASEAN was fragmented, disconnected, economically separate. Malaysia bet billions that it would eventually integrate digitally. That bet is now paying off spectacularly. While other countries focused on national development, Malaysia built regional infrastructure, fiber networks connecting all ASEAN capitals, submarine cable landing stations, data centers positioned to serve all ASEAN markets, semiconductor supply, chains for regional manufacturers, regulatory frameworks compatible with ASEAN integration. They built the infrastructure for regional digital integration before the region digitized. ASEAN, 680 million people, fourth largest economy globally, $1 trillion digital economy by 2030. Every country needs cloud infrastructure, data processing, semiconductors, connectivity, and AI compute. Malaysia is positioned as the provider at regional scale. Not because they forced it, because they built it first. 21st century power isn't about national dominance. It's about regional infrastructure networks. Malaysia understood this before Western strategists did. They built the infrastructure 680 million Southeast Asians will use. That's not a market position. That's civilizational positioning, which reveals the ultimate truth. One. The Empire Reveal. Infrastructure Innovation. Here's what the U.S. missed while chasing AI hype. Malaysia built a tech empire by controlling infrastructure, not innovation. And it's already too late to stop them. The complete picture. Connect the dots. 50 years of semiconductor dominance. 30 years of data infrastructure investment. Massive English-speaking tech talent pipeline. Perfect geopolitical neutrality. Aggressive tax competition. Early Renewable Energy Positioning Regional Data Sovereignty Solutions ASEAN Infrastructure Integration Every piece compounds with every other piece. The numbers, 50 plus billion dollars in tech investments and counting. 13% of global semiconductor trade. Regional Data Infrastructure Hub for 680 million people. Essential manufacturing capacity for global electronics. Training grounds for Asian tech talent. Renewable energy infrastructure for AI computers. It's not one advantage. It's a compounding ecosystem 40 years in the making. The strategic insight. America focused on innovation. Creating new technologies, funding startups, developing AI. China focused on scale, building massive, manufacturing everything, creating domestic giants. Malaysia focused on infrastructure. Owning the unsexy foundation both America and China depend on. While superpowers fought over headlines, Malaysia captured choke points. Why America missed it? U.S. strategic thinking is stuck in the 20th century. Control innovation, control the world. But 21st century reality. Innovation is global and diffuses rapidly. Infrastructure is local, durable, and defensible. Malaysia understood the game changed. America didn't notice until the game was over. The Empire. This isn't an emerging market story. This is a tech superpower that emerged while everyone was distracted. Malaysia doesn't need to compete with Silicon Valley or Shenzhen. They enable both. That's not competition. That's control. They built the pipes, owned the processing, controlled the power, trained the workforce, 
and position themselves at the center of Asia's digital future. What it means, global tech power is now tripartite. U.S. controls innovation layer, China controls scale layer, Malaysia controls infrastructure layer for Asia. The West focused on invention, while Malaysia focused on indispensability. Invention is replaceable. Infrastructure is not. The checkmate. Intel needs Malaysian packaging. Data centers need Malaysian space and power. AI needs Malaysian computer infrastructure. Cloud services need Malaysian regional hubs. Electronics need Malaysian manufacturing. There's no quick workaround. Replicating Malaysia's 40-year infrastructure build-out would take 40 years. The U.S. wasn't paying attention, and now it's too late to catch up quickly. Conclusion Malaysia executed a 40-year strategy. Capture semiconductor backend, build data infrastructure first, create debt-free talent pipelines, maintain perfect neutrality, weaponize tax incentives, invest in renewable energy early, solve data sovereignty, prioritize boring infrastructure over sexy innovation, and build ASEAN's digital foundation before ASEAN unified. 10 moves. For decades. One result. The tech empire nobody saw coming. Did the U.S. lose the infrastructure war while chasing innovation? Can Western countries recover? Or is Malaysia's position unassailable? Drop your analysis below. Subscribe for more hidden power shifts. Hit the bell. This channel reveals what mainstream media misses. See you next time.